G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. I'm going to talk about patch antennas today because in my last video, the Aomway 15 dBi patch and what is it? Yeah, 14 dBi patch antenna just didn't seem to work. It was worse than a piece of wet string. So I thought I said we'd take a look inside and see how it's made. But I'm going to show you another patch antenna first. Now this is a uh, got that up the wrong way around. This is an uh, at 11 dB antenna on 5.8 gigs patch antenna and you can see patch antennas are really quite simple we just have a lump of metal which captures the radio waves and then feeds them down the cable uh, this one has two patches of metal which means it has 11 decibels of gain a single patch of metal like that will have about eight decibels and every time you double your dec every time you double the power you add three decibels so you're doubling the amount of receiving area you get three extra decibels it goes from eight to eleven and you notice that these are just fed by a wire which goes in there and the wire comes out the same edge on them, so that the, the phase is the same. That means that the, when a wave hits this thing, we have a, the same voltage appearing on here, meeting there, and then going back down to your receiver. So it's a linearly polarized antenna. It just means that the, the signal arrives at the same time and gets fed into the coax at the same time. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And that is a really simple, really cheap, modestly effective patch antenna for 5.8 gigahertz. Right, so look at the AOM way. Now people have said this is circularly polarized and you can make circularly polarized patch antennas, but it's not easy. I'm gonna take the covers off here. And other people said, do you sure you had it the right way around? Well, I tried it both ways, but I was pretty sure this was the active side. And when we take the covers off, you can see, yes it is, because if I pull this out of here, out of the clever plastic case, there we go. This is the back side. You'll notice if I get the light right, it's just a blank. There's no patterns on there. This is actually just a sheet of copper. And we have a piece of fiberglass PC board. And on the other side, we have our patches. If we turn the light, you can see we've got one patch, two patch, three patch, four patches. And as I said, a single patch gives you uh, eight, eight decibels. If you double that by putting two patches, you get another three, which makes it 11. And if you double that again by putting, going from two to four, then you get 14 decibels. So this should have 14 decibels of gain. Now, interestingly enough, on this particular patch, the wires or the feed it's a little thin copy you can see try and get it lined up here you see the little thin feed there these little copper things here are called micro strip because they're very small strips of copper and you notice they're not all the same width the, the strip that actually goes onto the patch is thin then we have a thicker bit this is what they call a quarter wave transformer basically all it means is that these little strips here are designed to phase the patches so on this other one the signal hit both patches at once and it arrived they both met up in the middle and arrived at the coax at the same time so it was linear there was no phasing on this one they've tried to make it so that if you imagine our circularly polarized wave is like a corkscrew so it's going to hit here and then it'll hit there and then it'll hit there and hit there so what they're trying to do is get it so that even though the wave is arriving at different times by using a delay and a matching network the the first wave that'll be delayed the first signal from this patch will be delayed and then the signal from this patch will be delayed so that if you add it all up they all arrive at the center point at the same time that's the theory but i'm looking at the matching networks here at the micro strips and i don't think this has been well designed i don't think it's been well designed at all um, because for example these two patches here if you look at it it's very much like this thing here we've got basically the same length of copper going from this one to the center feed and this one to the center feed hmm something strange going on there now what we do have here is kind of a, a phasing network but even that it only has one input and one output so it's not really causing any phase changes either so I think this is just the reason this didn't work is it's just not very well designed um, I could be wrong because this is black magic this is voodoo this is one of the reasons they have black on here is because it's black magic um, antennas are a really tricky thing especially trying to make a circularly polarized patch antennas with micro strip there's a lot of voodoo goes on in there and you it doesn't always work the way it appears to work when you look at it now I've done some basic tests. I wanted to make sure that this wasn't broken. For example, I have put my multimeter and found that all four patches are, con are connected, so there's no cracks in the little micro strip. And the patches go to the center of this coaxial cable, and the center of the coaxial cable goes right through to the pin. Likewise, the earth is contiguous from there to there and onto the back plane of the patch. So there's no electrical faults in this antenna, but it just doesn't work. And I'm thinking, well, actually, if you look at the comments on my last video, a lot of people said they've had bad luck with these antennas too. So maybe they're just really crappily designed. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe whoever designed them really didn't get the matching right and get the phasing right. So it doesn't really work that well. I don't know. Another thing I've noticed though, 
this uh, dielectric here, the, the, the fiberglass, this should actually be Teflon. At 5.8 gigahertz, fiberglass is not a good material to use for a patch antenna. Fiberglass has a lot of losses. It has very poor um, dielectric capabilities at 5.8 gigahertz. It should be glass reinforced Teflon, not epoxy. Um, no, I don't think it is Teflon. I just scrape away there and no, that definitely feels like fiberglass to me. So I haven't, probably haven't used the best. I'll just have a closer look at that because it's a bit hard to tell. Um, now I'll have to chip a bit off and see, but I have a feeling this is fiberglass and not Teflon. It should be Teflon at 5.8 gigahertz, otherwise you get massive losses uh, between the two sides. So I don't know, that could be a factor as well. So there you go, um, no conclusive evidence as to why this doesn't work. It's not faulty, so I can only suggest that it just wasn't very well designed. Or perhaps the, the circular polarisation they've tried to achieve has actually really screwed up the gain, something horrible. And uh, yeah, but... When it comes down to antennas, I mean, we've got helical and we've got patch, and there's pros and cons to both. Um, the helical, of course, has much better circular polarization. Even the best patches tend to be, they have what's called an axial ratio, which is not really that close to one. Uh, an axial ratio of one means that the, the, the wave is circular. There's a circular corkscrew. As you move away from one, it tends to get enlarged and becomes elliptical and linear pol a program uh, sorry a linear polarized signal of course is effectively infinite because it's all in one direction so the idea is you have two electromagnetic forces and they cross so if they're both the same length you get one to one and if one is bigger than the other then you get something above one or below one and if one's missing altogether you've got infinitely large or infinitely small axial ratio so hmm little bit of background for you. Anyway, the other problem with patches is they tend to be quite narrow in their bandwidth because these patches of metal effectively resonate at the required frequency. Um, you get a very narrow bandwidth, which means that, you know, if you've got a very broad band like the 5.8 gig FPV, which can be, what, you know, from 5.6 something to 5.9 something, then these can tail off really badly at the ends. Maybe I should, I tried to use this fairly medium frequency, but maybe I should try a different range of frequencies and see if it works okay. Um, yeah, but the advantage of these is they're small and they're cheap to make. So, you know, um, that is ideal for the hobby market. But really, if you're going to go, I'd go for the helical because it's a, a much better performer.